Welcome to video number two. I'm Mr. Mullen and I'm going to be doing the first part on ratios and proportions. Mr. Saji will be coming in to do the second part on unit conversions. So let's get started. As always, if you don't understand anything in these videos, it's very important to seek out office hours now so that you can start algebra or geometry depending on where you're going uh, on the right foot. So let's talk about ratios. A ratio is very simply the comparison of two things numerically. So in other words, if I, let's say if I had a bunch of shapes. Now if I wanted to write a ratio, the first thing you have to do is you have to define where you're going to put each item. So I have two things. I have circles and I have rectangles. There's lots of ways to write ratios. Sometimes you see them as 1 colon 2 or sometimes you see them as 1 fraction 2. Those are the most two common ways that you might see that. We are primarily going to be using the fraction method for writing ratios. If we're using the fraction method for ratios, we have a top and we have a bottom. I have two things. I have circles and rectangles. Once you decide to put circles in the top or rectangles in the top, your choice, you have to stick to it though. So if I'm going to indeed do circles in the top over rectangles, I have set the order in which my ratio will be written. All you, said, all you have to do is, we counted up the number of circles, we said that there were four. We count up the number of rectangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have to use division or divisibility to put this in its simplest form. So I know that 4 goes into 4, of course, and 4 goes into 8. So what I can do is I can use division in the top and the bottom to put my ratio in, in simplest terms, 1 over 2. So this means that for every one circle, I have two rectangles. So, from ratios, we go, we get to proportions. Well, what is a proportion? How does it connect to ratio? Well, a proportion is very simple. A proportion is when two ratios are equal. So let's show an example. It's still summertime. We're going to have a cookout. And you're in charge of ordering hot dogs and hamburgers. And as a general rule, someone says to you, Well, generally in our family, for every one hot dog, we cook three hamburgers. So we're cooking on the grill, and there are six hot dogs on the grill. So in order to complete my proportion here, ratio equal to ratio, right? I have to analyze what I've done here. I have our original ratio is 1 to 3, right? And we have gone up by a factor of 6 here to get 6 hot dogs. So in order to make this a proportion, we have to go up by a factor of 6 in the bottom. 
I need 18 hamburgers. It's a busy grill. So you might be saying, well, that's great, but what if I can't find the factor to go up by? Well, that's okay. We have a process for solving proportions. And the process we use to solve proportions is called cross products. Sounds fancy, but cross multiplication. So let's do a couple of examples that you may not be able to find the factor. So let's try this. If I have a ratio 15 to 5 and I on the in my second ratio I have 6 is to x. And in algebra when we don't know something we do typically use a letter and a lot of times that letter is x. So when we get to the algebra part, we'll be reinforcing that concept. So let's do some cross product solving here. So I know this is a proportion because of the equal sign. That's the key. So we're going to start, and I am simply going to cross multiply where I have two numbers. So I look, I got 15 and x cross, right? And I have 6 and 5. Well, where are my numbers? My numbers are 6 and 5. 15 times x, we don't know what x is, so we can't use that. So 6 times 5 is 30. Usually I like to write that right up there as a reminder. And then once you get your cross product, we have to divide by the number we didn't use. So we're going to divide by 15. 30 divided by 15 is 2. And we have found our missing variable in the proportion. Let's try one more example. If I have an initial ratio of 2 to 8, and my second ratio is x over 20. And the instructions will say, what is x? What number can we put in there to make this a proportion? So again, I'm going to start with my cross products. Multiply where you can. Well, I have 8 and x and 20 and 2. 20 and 2 are two numbers. 20 times 2 is 40. From here, we're going to divide by the number we didn't use, 8. 40 divided by 8 is 5. And we have found our missing value. Proportions uh, are going to be utilized in algebra and geometry across all math platforms. So uh, again, if you don't understand how this was done, please come to office hours so that we can straighten that out. Hello guys, this is Saji again. Today we're just going to look unit conversion. What is unit conversion? Means? Basically, you're going to convert from one unit to another unit. Just an example. Think that you guys use everyday money, am I right? So think about if you have 100 pennies is equal to how many dollars? Everyone knows it's equal to one dollar. Alright, so 
if you have 100 pennies every single time it's equal to a dollar all right now let's say you open your penny jar or you count all the pennies you are ending up with eight thousand seven hundred pennies all right now my question is how many dollars anybody can figure it out let's see now we know every hundred dollars there's I mean every hundred pennies there's a dollar so if you have eight thousand seven hundred pennies how many dollars we're gonna have. I just put X. We put X for unknown values. If we don't know something, we just, just use alphabets. In here, most of the time, we use X in math. All right? So now, how we find out? Pretty simple. You just gonna cross multiply. which is you want to end up with 100 is equal to 8700 times 1 divided by x all right now same thing that you want to do over here Close multiply. All right. Now you have one hundred x is equal to eight thousand seven hundred pennies. Now you have when you multiply hundred times x, it's going to be hundred x. Now hundred x is equal to eight thousand seven hundred. Now, to find out x, what you need to do, you have to divide by this number to find the one unit. So what you're going to do over here, you're going to divide by 100. This equal sign, it's like balancing both sides. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side too. So we just divide it by 100. So if we divide in this side, we have to decide in here too, which is 100. So 100 divided by 100, it's going to be what? 100 going to be divided by 100, it's going to be 1. 1x. In this case, if it's 1x, you don't need it. For example, you're not going to say a candy. One candy, you're not going to say one candy. You just can't say candy. Okay? That's the same thing over here. It's x. You just put x in here. Now you have 8,700 divided by 100. When you divide by 100, it's pretty simple. One of the zeros, you're just going to cancel out. In here, we have two zeros, and on the top, we have two zeros, so we just cancel out. What is left? 87 divided by 1. Any number divided by 1, it's going to be the same. So it's going to be end up with. 87. So the x is 87. That means you have in your penny jar 87 dollars. That's, that's how you convert it. Okay? Let's see another example. I'll raise this. In metric system, we say 1000 meters m is equal to meters is equal to 1 kilometers all right so every 1000 meters there will be 1 kilometers all right now 
My question, if you have 3,750 meters, how many kilometers? Again, I don't know how many kilometers, so I just used X to find out the unknown variable. All right. So we know every thousand there's a one kilometers. So if it's three thousand seven hundred fifty meters, how many kilometers? Again, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go a little faster. We're gonna cross multiply both sides. If you cross multiply, thousand times x, it's going to be what? One thousand x is equal to 3,000, sorry, 1 times 3,750, it's going to be what? Any number multiplied by 1, it's going to be the same number. So it's going to be 3,750. Now, we have to find out what is x. So we have to get rid of this 1,000. What do we need to do? This 1,000 is multiplying the x, so we have to do the opposite thing which is division, we're just going to divide by 1000. If we divide one side, we have to divide on the other side too. Now, one thousand and this one cancel, you end up with x, which is one x. Now, Here's the tricky part. How are we going to divide 3,750 by 1,000? Let's see. This number ending up with 0 and the bottom, which is 1,000, also ending up 0. So we just can cancel those zeros. All right. Now we have 375 divided by 100. Let's look at this. We have two zeros. If you have two zeros, what you can do, you're going to move two digit and put a decimal to the left and cancel the zeros over here. So if you do that, you're going to end up with what? 3.75 divided by 1. All right. Now, we previously said any number divided by 1, it's going to be the same number. Same thing, any number multiplied by 1, it's going to be the same number. So in here, x is going to be 3.75 divided by 1, it's going to be the same number which is equal to 3.75. If you have 3,700 meters, that's equal to 3.75 kilometers. All right. Now, let's go for another example. I'll raise this. Everyone, I'm hoping that you guys know 12 inches in a foot. So I'm going to write 12 inch, I'm just going to put in, which is inches, is equal to 1 foot. So every 12 inches, there will be one foot. All right. Now my question is, if you have 64, if your height, or Mr. Ryan's height, is 64 inches, what is his height in foot? So, we don't know. We have to find out. So what do we need to put? We're going to put x, which is unknown variable. 
So, every 12 inch we have one foot. Ryan's height is 64 inches. So how many foot? Now, do the same thing. Again, we're going to do the cross multiplication. If you do it, 12 times x, it's going to be 12x, which is equal to, we already know any number multiplied by 1, which is going to be the same number. We are multiplying 1 times 64, which is going to be 64. Now, we have to find x. What do we need to do? We have 12 right front of x. We have to divide by 12 to make it x. If we divide one side, we have to divide on the other side by the same number, which is 12. If you do it, 12 divided by 12, which is 1x, we just can write, which is x. Now, how many 12 in 64? It's 5. I highly recommend you memorize your multiplication table. Other than that, it's going to take longer to do it. If you know the multiplication table, you know 12 times 5 is 60, you have left with 4. So, I'm just going to write 5. So, 5 times 6, I mean 5 times 12 is 60. So, what is left? 64 minus 60, you have left with 4. I'm just going to put, put 4 and divide it by 12. Still, we can reduce this fraction. How are we going to do it? We have 5. What can divide top and bottom? When you look at it, you can divide top and bottom by 4. So, how many 4's on the top? 1. How many 4's on the bottom? In 12, which is 3. So, Mr. Ryan's height is equal to 5 one third feet. You want me to do the other one or you have time? Good? Okay. So, we're going to go a little harder now. Like a little tough question. Let's see if we can do it. If a car can travel 10 meters per second. M is meter, S per second. My question is, if somebody if so a car travel for 10 meters per second. My question is, how many kilometers a car can travel in an hour? So now we have to find out how many kilometers that car can travel. First thing, we should know we have to find out how many seconds in an hour. First thing, we know 60 seconds is equal to one minute. All right. Now, we know 60 minutes is equal to one minute. Oh. So every minute has 60 seconds. So what do we need to do? Instead of 60 minutes to convert into second, I'm just going to put 60 seconds instead of minute times 60 minute, which is equal to 3,600 seconds is equal to one hour. All right.
If you find out this, then the rest of it is piece of cake. How? You know every single second this car traveled 10 meters. Now we can figure out in 3600 seconds how many meters it's going to travel. What we need to do? 10 meters times 3600 seconds which is equal to multiplying by 10 it's pretty simple you add extra zero one more zero on the other number so 3600 times 10 so we're going to add that zero over there so 3000 i mean 36000 see i add one more zero instead of two zero one more zero when we multiply by 10 now this is in meters uh-huh now we have to find out in kilometers. So we already know thousand meters is equal to one kilometers. Now we have three thousand six hundred meters and we have to find out how many kilometers. Pretty simple. Like we did last time, we do the cross multiplication. You know any number multiplied by 1, it's going to be the same number, so it, which is going to be 3,006, I mean sorry, 36,000. 1,000 times x is 1,000 x. Now, we need to find the x. What do we need to do? We have to divide it by divide by the same number on the top, which is thousand. If we divide one side, we're gonna divide by the same number, the other number. When you divide it, this thousand divided by thousand is one x, which is one. One times x is one. I mean, one time x is x, so it's gonna be x. Dividing by 10, 100, 1000, it's pretty simple. You just cancel out the zero and then if you have extra, extra zero on the divider, you're just going to move the decimal point under the left. How many zeros do you have? How many times are you going to move? So in here, I'm going to cancel zero, zero. One cancel and the other one cancel. The next one cancel. So now we have 36 divided by one. Any number, again, divided by 1, it's going to be the same number. So in this case, we have 36 kilometers. Again, guys, if you don't understand, just come to my office hours and we will talk about it again. Okay? Thank you.